I previously spoke with Joseph Nagivni, Brother Knight and relative of Blessed Michael Nagivni, about his healing. Let's take a look at that conversation. Joe, thanks for being here today and taking the time. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I'm happy to be here. So tell me a bit about what your relationship with God is before all this happened and how it then changed. But give us just sort of a picture of life before the miracle. Sure. Um, you know, I was born and raised Irish Catholic, um, you know, was baptized for communion, confirmation. Um, so I would say I, I was always a believer. Uh, I knew how I knew the words to the prayers. Um, but I, I, at that point in my life and into my adulthood, you know, when people would talk about, you know, having a re personal relationship with God, um, I didn't know how to do that. And as a result, um, you know, I was somewhat controlling, somewhat self-centered. And as, as I progressed through adulthood, um, while my belief in God never, uh, never ended, I, I just, I didn't, know how to make a connection with him. I just didn't, didn't have that blueprint. Um, or maybe part of it too was because of my kind of selfishness. It just wasn't that important to me. Um, that all, that all changed obviously when I, you know, was, had that spontaneous miraculous healing and then soon after learned all the details of what had happened to me. Uh, I had this overwhelming desire to create that connection. And um, I, I, I learned to do that um, initially through being a part of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, which, uh, you know, in a quick summary, there, people always say your, you know, your disease, your alcoholism will lead you to AA, but AA will lead you to God. And that's what happened for me. I want to ask you about Father McGivney in a minute, but before I do that, not everyone has a story to tell of a miraculous healing. And what I find interesting about your story is you don't actually remember this, the, the moment, the, the process by which you went through this amazing healing. But you knew afterwards you needed to develop a relationship with God. So to all the people who are watching this, who are maybe where you were before and just saying, you know, I believe in God, but I don't know him personally. What would you say to them just in terms of do these things? Or here's a way to, if you want a personal relationship with God, here are the steps, so to speak. Uh, and not because you need a miracle and not because yeah. you're even necessarily dealing with addiction, but just what are the steps to growing in intimacy with God? Well, for me, in my case, and I'll speak to my personal experience um, it all, you mentioned steps. It all began with going through these steps in the uh, program of AA. The third one being um, made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of God. Well, based on the brokenness that I was experiencing after learning about the pain I had caused so many people, uh, you know, making that decision to turn it over to his care sounded like a really good idea. But I didn't know quite yet how to get there um, until a very kind therapist, um, you know, had was in the facility where my awakening occurred. As I was being discharged, she said, "Joe, you've, I'm going to pull up something on my screen." And she Googled surrender prayer, and up popped this very long prayer. She said, Joe, promise me you, when you get home, you'll print this prayer and you will make it a part of your everyday life. And at that point, I, I, I said, I'll, I'll do that. What, what, you know, I'm thinking, what do I have to lose? Because obviously everything I've done so far didn't work very well. So that surrender prayer over time became just a part of who I am and my I finally started to feel that real relationship. And I started seeing and learning over time that if I just had the strength to s surrender it all to God, that all these beautiful, wonderful things just kept happening in my life. And, 
you know, to this day, that surrender prayer, um, and then that process of surrendering it all, all over to God is a part of my everyday life. Um, and in my world today, when being human, when I start to become selfish, when I start to become anxious, when I start to get sideways, as I say, um, that surrender prayer, I, I may pull that one out three or four times in the same day. And it always brings me back to this, this feeling of peace. And, and, you know, frankly, it's my life has been so filled with joy and wonder since I turned it all over to God. Um, I only wish I had learned all the, how to figure that out decades ago, but here I am today and so grateful, so grateful that I have that, uh, that relationship now. So Father McGivney, obviously of interest to the Knights and all of us is a big part of this story. I wonder if you could just tell us in brief, um, what's his role in all of this and what's his continuing role in your life? You're a Knight, your son's a Knight. Um, you're talking to a bunch of Knights on this show. Tell us about Father McGivney and what he means. Well, I mean, for me, and um, there's no question in my mind, no question that Father Michael's intercession led to where I am. And the, the way that came about, um, after I had had my, my healing and I'm now trying to figure out how to live my new life, um, it became really important for me to start serving, you know, serving others. And I knew of my connection to Father McGivney. Um, and so I decided uh, to join the Knights after all these years. And soon after, um, I was having a conversation with my aunt, Jerry, who was the nurse again, that had quarterbacked my care. And Jerry it, had a particular devotion to father Michael. And in our conversation, I, I, I you know, was very excited. I said, Jerry, I, I guess what? I just became, I signed up to become a member of the Knights of Columbus. And she you know, I was expecting her to be really happy. And all of a sudden I hear she started sobbing and she said, Joe, you have no idea um, how, how overwhelmed I am with joy. She said, because when you were sick, uh, I was praying to anyone who would listen, but I was praying devoutly to Father Michael. She said, in fact, we were on a phone conversation. She said, Joe, I'm looking at his picture right now. So what Father M Michael is, has meant to me and continues to mean to me, me today, um, I, I believe he is a very powerful intercessor. Um, each day I pray, read that prayer, you know, right from the prayer card right here. You know, I read the Father McGivney canonization prayer, and I now have a kind of very ongoing list of other folks that need a miracle that I pray for. And I pray that Father Michael will intercede on their behalf. So that's, you know, Father McGivney is a part of my everyday life now. 